First of all, there is proof, evidence now. There is proof and evidence now of his loving kindness, his friendliness, hospitality. <clears throat> Are you there? No, cannot go. There is loving kindness, friendliness, hospitality, accessibility. Is that a good word? You have access towards God. He's there for you. Let's just go on. Mercy. There's mercy. There's practical help. And you have proof about His loving kindness. You have proof about His mercy, His practical help. That is fine. You will find that in verse 7 of Isaiah 63. Then, as, as we will run further. Secondly, there's a Savior now. There's a Savior now. And there's this position before God that you have now. First of all, you have proof about God's greatness. You have proof about His mercy in your life. <clears throat> if you open your eyes, the fact that you are alive, <clears throat> the fact that you are not burned away. Hello? There's proof about God's grace and His mercy on your life. You need to see that proof now. Okay, there's a Savior now before you. Jesus Christ, in verse 8 and 9. Point 3. Where is He now? My question to you. Where is He now? If that Savior is there, if you have proof about His mercy, and please go and read that scripture I'm running through now. I'm running seriously. Quick. Is that the right time? The righteous... He's not hasty. <laughs> I experienced a hastiness with that clock. <laughs> okay. Verse 11. Then his people seriously remembered. When all the rubbish starts to happen, we realize and we have a serious guts to evaluate our life where we are with God and where not. When they seriously remembered the days of old and the people they said, where is he? Where is he who brought our fathers out of Egypt with Moses? Where is the shepherd? Where is he who puts his Holy Spirit within their midst? Where is he who caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moses? That's Jesus Christ. Who, where is he who divided the waters before them to make for himself an everlasting name? Where is he who led them through the depths like a horse in the wilderness so that they did not stumble? Where is he? Etc., etc., etc. The Spirit of the Lord that caused them to rest. So that you lead your people for yourself to make yourself a beautiful and glorious name. Where's the one in your life? Where is he? In your emotions? Where is he in your destiny? Where is he in your past? Where is he in your thought patterns tonight? <coughs> Where is he in your finances? Where is he in your job? Where is he in that intimidation that you experience? Where is he? Can you see him? It's good to have the testimony. There's proof. You have evidence now if you open your mouth and you can just see. You have evidence about God's goodness and his grace. There is a Savior. You know it. You know even the guys there in the world. Even the Satanist priests know that there's a God. They are actually a proof that there is a God. Hello? Where is he now? That's the question. Where is he now? Is he there in your emotions, in your life, in every facet? Is he the one breaking through for you? So that you have breakthrough through the Red Sea. Amen? That you will not fight the Egyptians, but a lot of us, we see the intimidation, we see the circumstances, and we turn around, and in the name of Jesus, we're going to fight these Egyptians. Foolish. God didn't say that. Turn around, go through the sea. God will sort them out. But why will we waste our life having a fight for life at the Red Sea? You need to hear God's strategy for your life. Otherwise, you stand for 30, 40 years at the Red Sea. Waste your life and the life of your children. May God help us that it will not be so. Where is he now? He said in two places here, he said he will do all this to make himself an everlasting name. Now, God's, God's name is already everlasting. Now, why will he make himself an everlasting name? 
among the people of God. He wants his name to have an eternal effect among his, the nations of the earth. He's making himself an eternal name, an everlasting name among the nations of the earth. That his name will be established and that the nations will respect his name and honor his name and know the stature of his name, that everything bows before his name. When you stand in his name, the world must listen. Your circumstances are arrested by his name. And through his name, if God says your circumstances must stay like that and you're supposed to shine in the midst of all that rubbish, then so be it. But in his name, you believe your circumstances are arrested through that name, through the, uh, the power and the authority of that name. Because he is making himself an everlasting name in your life and through your life. Amen. And the next point, just four verses further, he says, he's making himself a beautiful and glorious name. What's that about? A name that is attractive. Now that's talking about intimacy. The first one is honor. Second point is about intimacy. That people will see the beautiful name of Christ. They will look at your life and they will know that the name of Christ is beautiful to you. You are not just respect the name of Christ. And why will they use the name of Jesus as a swear word? Because the truth is there. That's the name. That's the name. Why? Let me stand as an outstander from Mars. I come into this world and I see the films in this world. And I see they are using the swear word. Jesus. Why? What is this big deal with this name? I'm just talking, I never met a Christian or the Bible or anything about the word. I'm just looking at the word, the, the world and what they do with that name. They could ask a question, say, why this big deal with this name that people use it in this way? You know, that's actually proof that there is this big deal about this name. <laughs> you with me? But the enemy tried to fight this name, but he cannot. So when people use that name in vain, they must know that you respect the name. And they must see the beauty of that name over your life. That name is not just a name that you respect, but that name to you is beautiful. That when you hear that name, there's an emotion in your heart about it. There's not just a respect about it. There's your limit, mate. That lady that is in love, you, you call the name of that guy, you know, she's just there. I'm not saying we must be on this airy fairy thing the whole time. I'm just saying the beauty of his name must be seen over your life. <clears throat> First, I made a mess with the testimony of guys at a certain time in my life that would come to me and stand in front of me and telling me this vulgar, rubbish joke and even using the name of Jesus. And I would tell him, that's not the way you're going to use his name in front of me. And then later I realized, but this strategy is not working. They are getting a reaction from me as if they want this reaction from me because they know what I'm going to say. So I started to, to do that and when they would say, Jesus, I said, oh, stop, stop, stop. Yes, I'm so in love with him. You know, Jesus, he did this for me, and he was speaking to me about this, and he was that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and he, he just blew them. And some just would back off, and some would repent. I saw so many different reactions. Man, use that moment. Like I told you, I'm so shocked with even we. Okay, bottom line. We buy some DVDs. All ages, the all ages will not have a swear word except the name of Jesus. I had to break now over the past year that we decided that we will cut a lot of other DSTF here. Not all DSTF is wrong, but we decided whoosh, we're going to get good quality films also for the kids and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I, maybe you will be shocked about some of the names, but I will, cannot use it here, and I will not. But you can ask me, <laughs> maybe, privately. But, uh, but you won't believe how many times. I think we took about 
seven DVDs that we broke, all ages. That is in our minds that we remember, wow, this is a good movie, you know? This was really nice and a nice feel and a nice story and etc. etc. Tell me all of these nice stories, guys. Ladies, all these nice love stories. In what are those stories you find the relationship where they, the lady says, um, respect me, we will, not, we will not go to bed. If you marry me, yes. In how many of your lovely films that you watch is that? Or in how many are they first hurrying in your beautiful movies? This lady giving herself to this man and for this time is real. For the rest it was just sex for sale. That, uh, sorry, prostitutes for sale. Uh, with, with, the, with them it was sex for free. The lady sleeping around, the guy sleeping around. That's even worse. At least for the prostitute you pay something. <laughs> but sleeping around for free, that's even worse. Now, are you, are you with me? Now, let's just be, be serious here. Are you with me? I'm talking about your beautiful movies. Where that is the norm, where that is the thing that you will show your child, and say, okay, we will watch this movie tonight. But let that people be in your house. And they say, no, just put the movie in your house in real people. And that guy and that girl, they're having a visit, visiting you, and you find their life so attractive and so relaxing and so um, a time for you and your wife to have a nice time looking at this guy and this girl. Not, not the scene, just the beginning and the end. <laughs> the morning, you know. All right, you let them next one sell because they're good all in your life. Forgive me, I've seen some of that all age movies. Is it with me? When did you see a movie where the name of Jesus was beautiful? Make sure what you watch. Make sure that you, in your mind, in your marriage with God, don't bring a lot of rubbish that the beauty of intimacy and attractiveness. Is not there, it's not present in you. But there's either this, this emptiness of fear, I'm fearing God, or this manipulating that is intimacy without respect. Uh uh, that's not what God has for me. I will position myself before Him in the right way. I will position myself in the right way, in this marriage, in the right way, in His glory, in the right way, under His hand of anointing, in the right way, in where I will stand and shine forth. Amen. In all that, what have we said already? Where is he now in your life? He's making a name where people see you respect him. And he's making a name where people will see you are in love with that name and he's, your life is beautiful because of his name. And he has a beautiful name. Your husband has a beautiful name. And people see that on your life. Great. Number four. Who are you now? Frau Fio Biermann, who are you? They say, hey, who are you? Verse 16. Verse 16. For you are our Father, even though you are our Father, O Lord, you alone, the Redeemer from everlasting is your name. And then verse 8. Yet, O Lord... Get the scripture in your head so that it can go down to your heart. Amen? Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, and you are potter, and we are all the work of your hand. If you know who you are as a child, <clears throat> then it can work for you. And he's busy forming you, and he's forming you, and he's stretching you. No, you know, the clay is being stretched out, and then in a bundle, in, in that way, and and every time you think, oh, Lord, no, this is not who I am. This is not what I like. And this is not. God is not finished. 